And welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kauai Foundation. I'm Ehu Kekahu Cardwell, and here we are today on the island of Oahu, in Aiea, at a very special place, and we have a very special guest. So come on, let's go over and meet him. Kia laula. Aloha. Aloha. How are you? Very good. Good. Good to have you on the show. Kia laula. Cockett, yes? Yes. Wonderful. And tell us where we are. We're standing next to a heiau, yes. right? Uh, right now we're in Aiea uh, on Oahu. Uh, this heiau is known as Keaiva. Uh, it was used for La'au Lapa'au teachings. Um, yeah, center, it was used for herbal practitioners. So La'au Lapa'au is, is uh, Hawaiian for herbal practitioners. Herbal practitioners. Medicinal purposes, right. things like that. It's a beautiful place, very awe-inspiring. Just wonderful. It's wonderful. It's a great place to come and has a, have a visit with you. Yes. Wanted to have you on the show today, Kealalo, because you're one of the younger generation that's beginning to get involved in the Hawaiian independence movement, yeah? Yes. Good. Let's walk this way and talk a little bit. So let's roll the clock back first and, and go back in time and talk about when you were in school. I know that there was a time when you and your sister, there was a, it was like a fork in the road, a, a, a point where you had a choice to make because some stuff was going on, or maybe I should say some stuff wasn't going on right. that you had wanted to have go on, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, okay, so when I was in seventh grade, I was attending a regular public school. Uh, this was at Pro City Highlands Intermediate, to be specific. Um, Pro City Intermediate, yep. Yeah, I ended up um, failing my seventh grade year. Really? Yes. Um, was failing in all my core subjects, science, math, English. Um, yeah, I was just showing up to school because that's what, you know, I was told to do is you go to school. That's our job as a kid is just to go to school. And um, that's how I felt was I was just showing up. I didn't really feel like I was getting, um, I guess, the nurturing that a student would need. Um, you, were, you were showing up, but you weren't inspired. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly what it was. I wasn't inspired. Yeah. Um, I had no motivation whatsoever. I ended up, um, after I failed that year, then um, one of my aunties started working for a charter school over the summer, and she let my dad and my uncle know about it. So uh, they felt that it would you know, be a good switch, try and give it out, something alternative. So um, they ended up signing up me and my sister for this school. And I was all happy and ready to go. And then um, I think it was about a couple of days before we were supposed to go in. And then I remember being at the bus stop with my dad and he was gonna get me in my bus pass. And just then I told him, oh, I can't do this, I'm not ready to switch schools, you know, still caught up in this public school thing. Actually, it was more for my friends is why I didn't want to leave. Because um, you, know, you had friends in the I other school, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, seventh grade, that's all you really thought about is, oh, got to start making new friends. Right. So I ended up canceling and deciding to stay at Pro City Highlands. I ended up failing again my second time in seventh grade before, um, and it was already clear from then, you know, if you, you fail again, I'm sorry, we're putting you in this charter school because it seems to be doing wonders for your older sister. And I could see it was doing wonders, so. So she was already there and doing well. She, she already went on the, uh, that year that it started. Yeah. So I ended up making the switch after my second time failing seventh grade. Yeah. I, I really did see the difference it was making in her and, um, I, you know, I'd wake up every morning to go to school and it was just blah. Yeah. But I would see her wake up, get on her own and be ready to go to school and just happy to be going. And she would tell me all these things that the charter school is doing, Hawaiian-based charter school. And I just thought it was crazy. All the things that, you know, she would come home saying they're, they're doing, whether it was, you know, they were at the state capitol or if, you know, they were just doing hands-on projects at the beach or up in the mountains, hiking, and I'm just like, what, how are you learning from that? And, right. you know, she just named all these things that she's getting out of it. And, I, and it was core subjects too, learning through those things, math, science, and I was like, how are you, how are you learning math and science through 
doing those things and mm -hmm. And not only those core subjects, but she would come home chanting and dancing hula and, you know, it was something, it was actually foreign to me, seeing her doing those things and, um, yeah, that's what I meant by crazy. Yeah, yeah, how could they get these results by doing this? Right. But eventually you decided to take the plunge, didn't you? Right. Oh, actually, um, it was forced. It's kind <laughs> of a thing where, well, if, if this, this school fail, fails you, uh, it's doing wonders for your sister, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. Right. Um, so, so they kind of pushed you in the pool. Exactly. Yeah. They pushed me in the pool, and um, that's drowning experience of my life <laughs> coming back to the surface, I should say. Wow. Wow. So you immediately things immediately begin to turn around for you. Huh? Actually, no. It didn't, really? It didn't immediately change. Yeah. Um, just coming from how how I said all this. Um, uh, hula and chanting and stuff was foreign to me. Right. Um, it took a while for me to get into that alternative mode and um, open my eyes to um, cultural things. So, um, you know, I, I went into this school still like typical um, public school kid. Uh -huh, um, yeah. So their way of teaching was still very foreign right. to you. But after a while, um, you notice the big difference in um, nurturing, how I mentioned what I felt public school was lacking. Yeah. Um, just that the hands-on teaching, it was so much more easier for um, a young Hawaiian male to, to learn that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I really feel it's in our DNA that you know, we have to, I think that's the best way to learn is to do it. That's the only way you're going to... Yep. That's the true test. Yep. Yep. That is the true test indeed. Yep. So things did, did turn around for you. Yes. Um, and I just took off with it. I found culture being my um, internal motivation, not only for um, practicing um, Hawaiian culture, but also with um, modern politics. Uh, I feel everything, they're all relevant to each other. Uh-huh. Um, so it all began to kind of tie together for you then, is what you're saying, yeah? Right. Wow. Wow, that's powerful when all the pieces finally begin to come into play and it's like, I see the picture. Yes, and luckily that picture was uh, self-identity and um, confidence in myself and um, not having to um, feel like you're trying to fit into a, a, what was actually the foreign system, not this Hawaiian culture was foreign to me. Yeah, so it really is true that one size does not fit all. Yes. So now we go from the school experience you had to the, what we call the real world, out in the real world. And so what is that like now well, for you? Because you're a young Hawaiian guy. I, well, I, I also feel luckily that um, the school that I went to, Hawaiian Beach Charter School, Halaolo Kahi, um, not only did it um, reawaken my na'au, but it, my family's as well, my household. Um, so, 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 so wait a minute, wait a minute, that, this is amazing. So by you going to the charter school, it not only awakened you as to who you are, but it awakened your dad and the people that live in your house. Yeah. It, ha it had that effect like dropping a, a pebble into a pond and the ripple just effect. Ripples, right? Whoa, that is amazing. Basically, just coming home and um, our parents showing interest in you know what we're learning at school and them coming out to see what we're learning, volunteer or, you know, the, um, whether it was political issues, culture issues, or even the foods that we're eating, because that was another big thing, or is another big thing that the school pushes, is eating right, knowing what's in our food. Um, I think that gave um, more insight to my parents to also look into. So from that, they also went off and um, you know started Googling, questioning, why, why are my kids learning these things? I, I don't even know, what are they talking about? These are crazy things. Wow. And um, just doing their research and doing their homework also, I should say. For as themselves, parents, huh? For themselves. Wow. As parents, as Hawaiians. Wow. And um, 
from there, they also receive that reawakening of their na'o and um, found that internal motivation to uh, continue on and support not only themselves but the rest of the Lahui Hawaii. So this thing really did have a big, big ripple effect, huh? Yeah. And, and I'm sure that that's, if that's true for your family, your ohana, that's true for other families, uh, other students and their families who went to the school too, yeah? I, I mean, that had to be happening across the board. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing effect. So then what about today? You're out of school now. Right. You're in the, you're in the uh, working force, like right. all the rest of us. Right. <laughs> uh, Unfortunately, I'm not working um, something towards, I guess, contributing to the Lahui Hawaii. Um, just because, you know, like you said, the real world, I'm finding myself, um, you know, bills to pay, um, my own mouth to feed. But um, I, I'm still too, so sure in myself that I can see this system that we're put into towards it. So at least I understand why things are, why I have to work, uh, why I have to make money. Um, it's not so much of, I just do it because, you know, that's life. But I understand why. I see the predicament that we're under. Mm -hmm. and, um, Meaning the illegal occupation, exactly right? Exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, the illegal U.S. occupation. And so you see, while you're out there in the working force, you're yeah. saying to yourself, you know, this is not the way it should be, right? Right. Yeah, this is the way it has to be because Hawaii is illegally occupied. Exactly what I'm saying. Uh, belligerent occupation, but if we weren't, the things would look a whole lot different. Exactly what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, so do you go back to Halau Lokahi, the school, and volunteer or put in your time there at all now? Yes, I do, um, as much as I can. Um, I'm off, luckily, Monday, Friday, school days, so every chance I get, I'm at that school. Um, not only during school days, but um, for also their special occasions too, whether it's canoe launches or family nights. If I can make it or if I can take off the time from work to make it, I, I make sure I do. Wow. Uh, just because I know their, their budgets also is getting, you know, cut drastically. Um, and I know they're going to need that extra help, you know, because I'm... They already had to cut enough teachers, which was unnecessary. They're, they're going through furloughs, so I know they need that extra help too. And um, How can I turn down something that helped me and my family's life so much? Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, that's, of all the places, that's, you know, charter schools like that, Hawaiian charter schools are the last places that should be cut because they literally are building the Lahui, the nation. Yeah. And you're a living prime example of that. So, obviously, uh, Keolala, this has really awakened a sense in you, and I also suspect, suspect in your sister and the rest of your family, a real uh, fundamental sense of who you are as Kanaka Maoli, Native Hawaiians, right? Tell us about that. What, 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 what has that done for you? What has what that awakened? What have, what have been the changes? Um... I would say, you know, first and foremost, uh, a level of consciousness, not only culturally, um, spiritually, even religiously, um, but also looking out into an even greater picture, which is outside of Hawaii also, and seeing um, the heaven that's going on all around the world, not only here in Hawaii. Um, try to do the best I can for the Lahui Hawaii first before anywhere else but for the Hawaiian nation exactly for the yeah. Hawaiian nation but, but you see the same syndrome going on all over the world all over the world yeah um, yeah a, a big help that helped lift my consciousness on that was actually music um, reggae music in particular um, just because a lot of the music also speaks about the same things the same problems that's going on all around the world mm-hmm it's very interesting, very interesting. So what have you done with that um, rise in, in consciousness? Um, I gotta say, take action when, when it's, um, when, when I have as much as time as I have, you know, I, it's unfortunate now because I'm so used to being out 
and being on the front lines fighting with the rest of the, the Hawaiians but um, the rest of the Kanaka but it's so hard now working and trying to fit that into my schedule but as much time as I have I'm there on the front lines making sure there is numbers getting the truth out um, that's also another big thing that we're up against is uh, numbers people who's willing to come out and not they're not going to be complacent with their life and just let it pass by um, they see the wrongdoing but they're not fully conscious enough to you know instead of going to the mall come down and help instead of sleeping in come out show the numbers mm -hmm. and um, just push, pushing truth maybe through whatever websites or um, talking to people and just letting it out um, like on Facebook, Maoli World, exactly. things like that. Just because um, another thing that I can see is how how much of a big part media is controlling the minds of not only the foreigners who, who are living here, but also our own Kanaka too. And it's um, unfortunate a lot of the times it's our Kanaka that we're up against who's unconscious. Or, you know, that's their job is to come and arrest us or tell us we cannot. We cannot do this, cannot do that. Right, because they don't know it's the against, real story. Right, it's against U.S. law. Right, right. Again, belligerent U.S. occupation. Exactly. Was this hard for you to to come out and be on the front lines? I, I actually had a good transition because that's what we were doing during school. Uh huh. So, uh, uh huh. It, it's a great school day. And instead of sitting in the classroom, we're there at you know the scene of the crime. Uh, whether it's at you know the, the state capital or uh, whether we're at a burial site, hail, wherever there's problems going on, we're there, hands-on learning and um, taking action for what's going on. Mm, wow, wow. <clears throat> so again, that has that has to have had a big impact on your on who, who, how you see yourself. Right and how your family sees themselves, yeah? And so, now we're talking about a guy who was not doing well at school and all, at all, who is now actually turned into a role model for others, yeah? I'd like to think so. Yeah, well, it's true. Okay. So what do you see as the future of Hawaii, Keolala? Um, U.S. occupation ends by what time is it now? Maybe in about a minute. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I'd love to see that. Yep. Um, I do see it happening um, just because I'm, I'm really a positive and optimistic. So I do see that happening. No doubt when that's going to happen. I, I'm going to say it's going to happen in, in my generation in, you know, so, real soon. It is going to happen in your generation. It is going to. So on the basis that it will happen in your generation, but let's, no, let's do it this way. Let's say that the occupation happened, uh, ended in 10 minutes from now, okay? okay? So the, uh, in 10 minutes, the occupation is gone, it's over with, and Hawaii is, an, is the independent country. What do you see as your generation's contribution to an independent Hawaii? Our contribution, um, restoring what's Pono for these islands, uh, for our people, um, we were a progressive people. We are a progressive people, not were. We are a progressive people. Um, most people like to think, oh, well, it's go it's go oh, it's going back to you know, grass shacks and coconut bras. Right. Um, they have to learn our true history of us being progressive and are progressive. Um, they have to learn the truths about our past. Um, what role do you think Hawaii can play in the world, a free Hawaii can play in the world amongst the family of nations? Um, roles, I think you'll go back to how, exactly how it used to be. We were a big role. Um, we are a big role. A lot of our Kanaka is very great, great thinkers. Um, we were ahead of our time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm sure our role will be very large. Yep, yep. And what what would you specifically like to do in a free Hawaii? If you could do anything, what would you like to do? Um, uh, definitely, um, my passion is 
working the land mahi ai so um you know most people will say oh well, that's going back but um that's everyone has to eat and um mahi ai kalo in particular um to me that was my calling that was another big thing that helped me um open my eyes to the true picture was um actually working having my hands in the lo'i and um working with halwa feeling the ukele um all of that stuff it just it, like i always say it real real woke my now yeah but you know mahiai farming really isn't i mean it could you know could be the past but not right. in the way that exactly. you talk about it oh, because, uh, what's <laughs> that's why it's really futuristic when you're exactly. talking about getting back to the aina the earth but also creating growing uh, the native diet that people can eat exactly. who can become so they can become healthy again and get rid of all these Western diseases that are caused by Western processed food and That ain't going back, baby. That's going forward. Exactly. Yeah, well, I was saying most people would say oh, that's going back, but um, they have to exactly take a look into um, What my I call or you know my I in general does right for you growing food is never go, go, uh, going back it's always going forward because it, it it feeds and sustains people exactly. yeah yeah wow that's really something so do, would you would you see yourself as uh, a farmer that just uh, feeds your own family is just sustenance oh, or definitely I, I would like to make it a community-based um, not commercial at all uh, community-based um, I believe that the Ahupa'a system worked for us um, the Hawaiian land exactly. management system exactly yeah uh, it worked for us um, you know it's shown and you know they're seeing it now and they're trying to play off this thing also in mainstream media is going green going green and say well we've been telling you that for how long a <laughs> couple thousand years exactly. at least yeah yeah it's amazing because not just in Hawaii but all over the world they're finding that you know what they used to consider is a old antiquated uh, and uh, you know, oh, you know, of, of the past, those ways and the principles and uh, are really very futuristic, and hold the keys to the future. Right. You know what I'm hearing when you say this, talk about this, Kailala, is that thread that runs continuously and it goes all the way back to Halau Lokahi, that charter school right. that you went to, that changed everything for you that it just content the ripples in the pond continue and the ripples get bigger and bigger and it, it started out with just for you and then it expanded to be your family and now what you're talking about doing if you could do anything in a free Hawaii is really an activity that would sustain and, and help people a lot of people right. live and be healthy that goes and you know that definitely goes along with being independent and not being dependent on others um, for food as one of them but I also understand the struggle that it is to um, sustain yourself you know land issues uh, water issues um, and just this system that is being forced upon us you know I I understand you know a lot of the struggles like why am I gonna pay eight dollars for a bag of poi when I could use that eight dollars and feed my whole family on dollar menu, right? From you know, from McDonald's, exactly. Right. So I, I see that as well, but um, I see that and know that it has to change and want to make it change rather than just that's how it is. Right. Like I said complacent. Yes, yes, it does have to change, and so it's it's guys like you in your generation, guys and gal girls like you in your generation, who are actually going to make that happen. We have uh, viewers of Voices of Truth all throughout Hawaii and all around the world. And some people that are older than you, some people that are younger than you, but a lot of people that are your age watch the show. So some of them may be sitting at home going, well, you know, it's easy for him to do it because he did this, but I could never do that. What would you say to them? Um, don't, don't be complacent. Seek truth. Um, as George Helm would say, do your homework. Um, to me, once, once you're conscious, you could never go back and you could never sell out once you reach your, your true consciousness, um, you see the heva. So I don't know any, I, don't, I wouldn't know how you would sit down and not do anything about it. Um, the truth is out there, but you have to seek it. Um, 
you have to free your own mind from the chains that's being put on it um, as my dad would say uh, you know don't sit on the fence build that fence yeah. that's great that's great so like you say once you know it's never you can't go back right. once your eyes are open they can never yeah. become closed exactly, yeah. again what a great way to end Kevalala mahalo for being on voices of truth mahalo. it's great to have you on the show and by all means keep doing what you're doing because it's making a huge difference mahalo. and to our viewers mahalo for watching voices of truth one-on-one -on -one with hawaii's future brought to you by the kawani foundation remember you can watch us on the web 24 7 at voices of truth tv.com I'm at Huke Kahu Cardwell, and until next time, ahui ho! Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also, view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.